Hi everyone, Brian Hotzik here with NCSI. Today I want to talk to you about asset management. You know, I talk to a lot of different customers um, and ask them what they mean when they mean asset management. Uh, and I get a lot of different answers. So today I want to talk about some of the fundamentals of asset management um, and talk about some of the best practice that we have and how we can implement that with Avanti's asset manager program uh, that's built on our enterprise service uh, management platform, Avanti Service Manager. Um, so a lot of customers, when they say asset management, they say things like inventory. I need to know about a device. I want to know its serial number. I want to know its IP address. Um, I want to know how much RAM that it has. So the, the technical components of that device, uh, we categorize that as the inventory of it. Um, then other customers say, well, I also want to be able to find devices. I don't necessarily know what's out there. Um, it's a bit of a jungle. I, I don't have good documentation up until this point. I need to go and discover devices. So that's our discovery component. Um, and these two things are important parts of asset management, but really that is just the tip of the iceberg. Things we oftentimes want to start with before we go into full asset management. Well, what, what do I mean by full asset management? Um, well, uh, this is kind of a thought exercise that helps you understand the difference between inventory and discovery and true asset management. Um, and it's making a statement like, well, I found 500 laptops on the network, or I have inventory of 500 laptops, um, but I have the purchasing information for 600. I bought 600, but I've only found 500. I, I don't know where the last 100 went. Maybe they never arrived. Maybe we sent them off to a department that doesn't have accounting for them. Uh, you know, what is the difference between the two? So asset management brings into the equation that really critical purchasing information. Um, understanding that a device is kind of created in our ecosystem when it goes through that purchasing life cycle. So um, the, the life cycle management is, is an important part of that. I need to know not just when I bought it, but how I bought it, what was the purchase order information, um, who I went and assigned it to, uh, who's, who's currently using it right now as, as part of discovery. Um, did I get that device back when the user uh, left the organization? Uh, did I dispose of it? Do I have a certificate of disposal to prove that I've destroyed the hard drive? So those are the things that we can accomplish inside of the life cycle. Um, then other things like stock management, you know, do I have any of these devices in stock? Do I need to purchase more? Um, you know, what, what assets do I have that are currently sitting on the shelf? Those are going to be difficult to discover if they're powered off and unplugged sitting on the shelf. So understanding, um, you know, what I have in stock. Um, then I can go to more advanced things like chargeback. Maybe I want to charge my different departments uh, for the cost of these or show back the uh, cost justifications on, on how these different things um, cost to uh, the organization. I can do things like chargeback. Um, and then do more um, fancy things like asset requests. Uh, you know, a user wants a device. Maybe we need to ask their manager for approval uh, before we go on to the next step. Or I need to understand that I need to go and make a purchase order because I have several asset requests coming in and I didn't have them in stock. So getting all of these things to work together and have a great workflow on engine on the back end uh, to be able to, to operate this. So these are kind of the fundamentals of asset management. Um, today I want to kind of show you a little bit more about how we can do that inside of Avanti uh, Asset Manager. Let's take a look at the console. So here we are logged into Avanti's Asset Management Program. Uh, this can be cloud-based or on-premise. You can see it's all web-based, and it is based on Avanti's Enterprise Service Management Platform, so it rides right alongside with our Avanti Service Manager. However, asset management can be implemented standalone. You can see I'm logged in here as an asset administrator, um, and I can see some really cool dashboards. You know, my assets based on type, my asset distribution based on their different locations, um, assets based on my financial owner, uh, assets that I haven't seen in a certain amount of time. And uh, any of these are uh, drill downable. I can click on them and it's going to provide me with a larger list of that. Um, I can look at an individual asset like I have right here. See, I have a server. Um, I have my asset tag associated with it, the serial number. Down here at the bottom, some of the specifications of that server, what kind of make and model it is, what's the part number. Um, who it is assigned to and the location that it is assigned to. Is it a physical server? Is it a virtual server? Is it in production? Uh, maybe I have a sensitivity or a security risk. Maybe I need to care about uh, PCI or HIPAA compliance associated with this. When did I purchase it? What is the asset age compared to its useful life cycle? So maybe if my servers are expected to last five years or six years, I can compare the in-service date or the purchase date uh, to the, the current age and, and provide a report for the assets that are going to come end of life next year, for example. Uh, down here, I can do uh, additional information like the barcode or the RFID. 
Um, on the Discovery tab, I can understand what the actual state of the device is today. And comparing that assigned value versus the discovered value is a very important thing inside of asset management. You know, if I go and give it to Bob and Jim is using it, uh, that's an asset exception and that's something I want to know about. So I'm going to understand the assigned value uh, versus the discovered value um, and then more discovery information down here in the bottom. Um, a particular asset uh, is going to have things like financial transactions. I can go over here and take a look at, uh, you know, something like, for example, the the time that I purchased it or when I'm paying uh, uh, maintenance on it on a yearly basis. Um, so I'm going to understand that on the financial transactions tab here. Um, that relates over to purchase orders. If you remember, uh, I said that purchase orders are very important to us understanding when assets come into the ecosystem. So uh, we're going to ingest purchasing information from your purchase order system you have. We can do that you know, either automatically or someone can manually enter this information. Um, and I'm going to be able to see it here. You know, Here I have a purchase order for some Dell Power Edge servers, what the total cost is, um, and then a link down to the actual assets down here in the bottom so I can understand what was purchased with that purchase order and then the reverse as well if I want to know what purchase order was used uh, to get a particular asset. We have a product catalog. Uh, a great uh, standard that you should uh, try and rely on is not just buying hardware or buying willy-nilly hardware. Let's, let's focus on having standards. So for example here I have a standard it's my Dell Latitude uh, E5440. Um, it's currently in approved state. Uh, it has an internal price of $1,150. Maybe I want to have a separate external price. Maybe I want to say, I'm going to charge the people in my organization $1,500 because there's associated uh, overhead with that. Um, here's different details down at the bottom of uh, you know the part number, the weight, et cetera, um, and uh, what its useful life is. Maybe I want to try and get 48 months out of my laptops. Uh, I can understand uh, what assets this is associated with. And what's great about this is when people want to get equipment, we're going to use this as the standard. Um, instead of just buying whatever make and model we want to, we stick with the consistent makes and models that have been uh, approved in the system. Um, next, we can go take a look at our stock management, understanding what we already own. So here I have open uh, one of my stock rooms. I have my, my Paris office storage here, um, and it shows that I have uh, several laptops uh, as well as a printer in stock. Uh, maybe I want to go in and issue this out to a user. So I could go and open up this particular asset and then go assign it to the user um, and make sure that it is now their uh, financial responsibility by saying assign user um, right here. So that's a quick run through of what the Avanti asset management platform looks like. Let's talk about how we can ingest this information into the ecosystem. A big problem we have in asset management is not having a single source of truth. Um, if you came from the ITSM space, you're very familiar with some of the ITIL best practices. Um, we have something called a CMDB. The CMDB is a configuration management database. It is a way to track IT assets as they relate to change management. If I want to change a server, I need to know about that server. I need to have an asset record associated with it. We call them CIs, configuration items. Um, well, asset management tracks a lot of the same things just in a different perspective. So instead of having two separate databases that we have to manage and try and synchronize, what Avanti uh, Asset Manager does is it just gives you two views to the same thing. So I have my CMDB view here. If I log into it as a change administrator, you know, I'm going to see things like, you know, the IP address, the service dependency mapping. I'm going to see what its lockout window looks like. Um, that's going to tell me things around a change management perspective. But if I log into that same system, but I'm an asset administrator, I'm going to see things like the warranty. I'm going to see things like, uh, you know, who is it assigned to? What is the user? Uh, what is its, uh, you know, expected life cycle? So it's the same database just shown from two different perspectives. This makes it so that we don't have to synchronize the two together. So our CMDB is just seen as a, ch as a database for our change administrators on one side and asset administrators on the other side. So how do we populate this database? Where are we going to get this information? Well, that's a very big problem for a lot of organizations, keeping this synchronized, keeping this up to date, because there's so many different sources of information. 
What, you know, what are some of those sources? Well, people say things like, well, I have my purchasing information. You know, I've got this database, it has purchasing information, um, you know, and it's somewhat interesting, but it's missing a lot of things. It might be missing serial numbers. It might be missing uh, more inf interesting information like that. Uh, maybe I have something like Active Directory. Active Directory is notoriously out of date and stale, um, but it is a source of information. I maybe have something like SCCM. Uh, that manages my endpoints um, and uh, has the serial numbers and you know what users logging into it, things like that. Maybe I have something like Solar Winds, and it tracks my networking equipment and my switches and my routers and things like that. Um, and then the list probably goes on. You, you know, maybe you have a separate thing that uh, you know tracks your printers. There isn't really one location that has all of this information. Um, we need to be able to ingest it from multiple different sources. Now, the problem is, what, were, what would happen if you were to bring this into a CMDB right now? Think about it. You probably have a machine that exists inside of Active Directory and inside of SCCM and inside of SolarWinds. You're going to get lots of problems like uh, duplication. You're going to have problems like um, inconsistency. You know, things like Dell, Dell Computer Corporation, Dell uh, Software, you know, they all really mean the same thing, Dell. Um, so we don't want to have these problems inside of our asset database or inside of our CMDB. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it into something called Avanti Neurons first. Neurons is going to be that collector that's going to have a lot of different ingestion points. We're going to run it through a deduplication engine and a normalization engine to clean up the data. Then we're going to bring it over into our CMDB or our asset database. That makes it so that I can have all of these different ingestion sources, but I'm not going to be caused those typical problems of uh, having you know, duplicates or having the same machine show up multiple times. So Neurons is a great add-on. It's not required as part of an Avanti asset management system to help clean that data up before we ingest it inside of asset management. So thank you for watching today. If you want to know more about Avanti Asset Management, please click the link down below uh, to schedule a meeting with us. Thank you.